Hey guys, welcome back. This is Chris and Randy with Marksman Shooting Sports and WeBuyGuns.com in Westfield, Indiana. Thanks for joining us again here. Today we're doing another unboxing video of some of the awesome inventory you guys have sent us. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it now. and break into the first one. Looks like we've got not one, but two Smith & Wessons. We need to move that one. Number one. You guys saw in last week's video, we got a 686. We got another one. This is a 686 plus. It's like a six inch barrel. The plus model, remember, has seven rounds which inherently makes it better than the base model because more is better. <laughs> very, very nice. The 686s, I can't say enough good things about these. These are all in stainless finish. The 586 is the blue model, double single action. Excellent revolvers. I own one like this, but it's an older pre-lock. How you doing? You're my favorite gun guy. Sorry about that, guys. Just had somebody come in with a couple guns, which we'll show you in a minute. So they pile on as we do the video. The other one we got, and Randy will show you in here. Let me get the paperwork. Which, by the way, uh, the seller of this one says excellent condition. Uh, guys, I a lot of you have been commenting on the other ones they, that you guys want close-ups. I actually have another camera and another tripod, which we're going to set up here showing everything up close. Uh, we um, were setting that up in the SD card I had. My spare one is broken, so that's not happening on this video, unfortunately, but I am getting another one. So coming up, we will have close-ups as we're doing these. Uh, but anyway, I know from far away, it's hard to tell, but customer says excellent, and this thing looks excellent. So definitely as described. Again, excellent should be, you know, from two feet away if I'm looking at it, do I have a hard time telling whether it's new or used? Aside from some like gunpowder residue, of course, but no scratches, scuffs, scrapes, or anything like that. Should just look like 99% condition. So this is definitely excellent and uh, glad to get that one. What's the other one, Randy? This is a 629 Classic uh, Smith & Wesson 44 Magnum Tallow Edition. There's a lot of engraving on here. Uh, there's a grizzly bear. I don't know if you can see it on there, but there's engraving on both sides of the gun. Um, some very nice grips on there. So any of the Talos special edition guns uh, are the already good looking gun that they just dressed up a little bit more. Now, Talo works with a lot of other manufacturers to, like Randy said, dress the firearm up and make it more aesthetically pleasing. Nice wood grips, nice engraving. And the 629 is essentially the stainless version of the Model 29, which everybody knows, you know, very popular 44 Magnum revolver. So very cool. Customer on that one, I'm going to I'm gonna say excellent on that, looking at it. I agree. Uh, customer says excellent. So yeah, those both beautiful condition probably have not been used much, if at all. So thank you for those. Uh, we're gonna stop and show you what just came in while we were filming that segment. So the two that came in while we were doing that, we got in a CMMG Mark 17 Banshee, and this is the newer one that takes the SIG magazines. Now that they have like the M17 and M18 out with the extended mags, uh, they have the, um, uh, the Banshee that uses that too. So really nice AR pistol, and pistol uh, caliber, uh, caliber carbine, if you want, pistol, pistol calibers. Uh, 9 millimeter 45 ACP, so that's cool to get that in. Um, he also brought with it a SIG, just basic run of the mill P320, 9 millimeter. This one just has a standard three dot sights, excellent condition. Newer ones are just coming in the gray SIG case that like the P365s and stuff come in. Uh, this is the Marlin Camp 45 rifle. Uh, it takes a standard. Uh, 1911 magazine 45 ACP uh, this one is in very good condition for its age um, this one actually came in through we buy guns but the customer who sent it uh, was a little anxious for us to make sure we got it and unboxed it so we didn't wait to start filming the video to do that so we just already unboxed it and let them know we got it um, and um, you guys saw one on the weekly used gun review. That is not this one. This is a little bit of an older one. Remember, these came out in 1985. The one that we had previously was a little newer. Uh, this one looks like it's probably from the 80s. It's got a lot of the early features on it. Okay, also we got in a really cool, this was a viewer of the channel who came in and wanted, wanted to trade us, <laughs> wanted to trade us a uh, 
firearm, to, uh, this FAL towards an AK. Uh, said he was excited about seeing his firearm on the channel. So we have it here because it did just come in today. Uh, probably we'll put this in a weekly use gun review as well. Uh, this is an Imbel FAL built on a DSA receiver. Uh, so it's kind of a parts kit build, which a lot of the FALs in the country today are pretty much parts kit builds. A lot of people use DSA because of the high quality receiver, but these are really cool. Uh, everybody loves an FAL, just a excellent firearm. So we'll get that in this. I know I didn't do a weekly use gun review this past weekend, but um, I'll try and get one done this weekend. Uh, next up, we have a Beretta Bobcat. So this is a little 22 long rifle uh, pocket gun. Very cool. Uh, the feature is the tip up barrel. So essentially you can load your magazine and have your magazine inside of the pistol uh, to load the actual round in the chamber. You tip the barrel up, put the bullet inside and clip the barrel back down. It's ready to go. Um, also very easy to unload. Uh, without removing the magazine. Again, that's just the stuff that came in today, so let's break into it. Okay, let's sign the Taurus. So these come, are coming to us from the same seller of the Smiths you guys just saw uh, from North Carolina. Uh, so thank you. Let's see. It's like we have a Ruger SR-22. Um, the SR series of the Ruger 22s uh, are probably the best semi-automatic 22 in my opinion ever made. Uh, they'll eat any kind of ammo. Um, I love these. I have one of these. Uh, they're awesome guns. Uh, they have a very nice feel to them and very, very reliable for a rimfire semi-automatic pistol. And the, what do you rate the condition of that one? I would say it's very good to excellent. Yeah, and, and so are said excellent. And looking at it, yeah, that's right. fine. I mean, looks from here, like I would have to question whether it were new or not. So that's a yes. very nice looking firearm. So here we have a Taurus TX. 22, another 22 rimfire pistol. The Taurus CX-22 hit the market just a couple years ago, and actually a lot of people really, really like these. These are also very reliable 22s, and it's funny enough, having them both here on the table coming from the same seller, these are probably two of the most, most commonly purchased semi-automatic 22 handguns for training purposes. Not talking about like the Ruger Mark series or any type, type of target uh, firearm, but for like a training implement. It does have the general feel of a full-size 9 or a 45 or a 40. So you could use these for good practice training, get the feels of a standard uh, semi-automatic, uh, you know, full-size, full-powered uh, firearm. But really, really cool firearms. And again, Usually on a semi-automatic 22, a lot of people have problems with cycling issues and jams, which still can occasionally happen. Uh, but on both of these, especially I have a lot of experience on the SR-22 as well, but on both of these, these are really known for being really reliable firearms. So again, thank you for getting these to us and we will be in touch with you and get them logged in. All right. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's gonna be a big one. <laughs> We're just gonna move on to the next one. All right. <laughs> Gotta work for it sometimes. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Um, I remember when this one came through the site, I could not find a whole bunch of information on these. But this is a Smith & Wesson M&P 15, but this is the Viking Tactical VTAC. Um, quite a few upgrades are put on here. The M-Lock forward handguard, this is a free-floated barrel. Uh, uses the Veltor, Stock, which model is that? Not too sure, I have to look it up. But these, I think hit the market around somewhere between 2014, I think it was around 2014, 2015, and they don't make them anymore. But interesting, uh, they have the Viking Tactical, the VTAC, um, M&P pistols too. Uh, just something a little bit different than the standard M&P line. But very cool, we'll get that logged in and let the customer know that it's here. Oh, by the way, let's condition. Uh, the customer said excellent. 
Yeah, and I would say excellent. It actually, I don't even think this has been fired, but very, very nice. Excellent condition rifle. So uh, nice to get one of these in. I never actually handled one, but he did know that they were around for a little while. All right, up next we have the SIG. In the box, it's actually a nice, nicely sized box. There's a SIG MPX. The MPX. <laughs> Watch the lookout. <laughs> The MPX, let's see, there's a couple magazines, pistol caliber, looks like 9mm, with three magazines. The MCX is the, like the standard 5.56 or the 300 blackout. So the MPX would be kind of the pistol caliber. This one has, it looks like a SIG Romeo 5 optic on it with the collapsing telescoping. Very, very cool. Side mounted sights. Show you guys that. What's the condition on this one, Randy? Customer rated excellent. Yeah, I'd agree with that. This is definitely excellent condition. These are really, really cool firearms if you guys have never handled one. It's like a little just PDW. Very, very compact, lightweight, ergonomic. Really, really a lot of fun on the range. And with high millimeter getting a little bit cheaper. Very, very cool to get that in. So what uh, state did this come Comes, from? Comes uh, to us from a customer in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, thank you, Pennsylvania. And we will get that logged in and let you know it's here. So next up, this one's coming to us from Colorado. A Walther. Walther PPS M2. These are really nice concealed carry pistols. I remember the first model PPS. When did that come out? It was around 2010, 2011 when the whole like shield craze was going on. The M2 came out a few years later. The standard PPS had a magazine release inside the trigger guard like a paddle. And on the M2, they went to the push button style that a lot of people like. These are actually really, really cool handguns. They're a little bit out, you know, a little bit dated based on the new sort of like one and a half stack double stack polymer pistols that are out now, but still for the money, these are really, really nice handguns. What would you rate the condition on that one? I would say it's excellent yeah, condition. That's what the customer said. So excellent condition. Again, this one comes to us from a customer in Colorado. So we will let you know what's in. All right, up next is one from Michigan. Springfield Armory, probably, yep, 1911. That was pretty fast. I feel like this one just came through. Yeah, it's a uh, range officer, 1911. Now, Springfield 1911s, I actually own one of these standard GIs. Mine's a stainless. It's the base model. On the uh, range officer, you do have a skeletonized trigger, skeletonized hammer, extended beaver tail, uh, extended uh, uh, safety, adjustable target sights. Um, very nice. They do make this in a stainless, really beautiful rosewood grips with two magazines. But for the money, these are not super expensive. They're under $1,000. Really, really nice firearms. And I don't believe the paperwork was in the box. So I will have to go take that off the website. But I would venture a guess to call this very good to excellent condition. What do you think? Very good to excellent. Yeah. yeah. So. I don't know what it is right now, but I'll go look, and as long as, e e either way, I'd be happy with it. So, very good. We'll let you know it's here. Thank you. I actually did go back through the box and found the paperwork at the bottom. So, uh, the customer said very good. So, very fair on that uh, quality uh, sort of valuation on that. But, remember guys, again, I will be getting close-ups of these in the future videos, so you guys can actually see what we're talking about. I know many of you said that that was kind of tough, but we are working on that. All right, next up is one from a customer in Virginia. Thank you for sending that in. A 
Chega. It's like a SIG P238 Copperhead. The customer did not have the receipt with the firearm, so I don't know what they marked. What would you call that? I would say good to very good. It's a, kind of a matte finish, so maybe it's better than that. I'd probably say around very good. Uh, there's just a little bit of wear like on the dovetail, I'll show you guys. But this is a P238 Copperhead, so these are nice pistols, a little bit smaller than the 938, which is a 9mm counterpart. Um, sort of like a scaled down 1911 style design. I know there's a lot of functional differences between the two. Let's see here. Um, but where we're saying good is there's just a little bit of wear back here on the beaver tail. It's a little bit of wear there, so it may have been carried a little bit, but other than that, it's, I would say, very good. It's just a little bit of wear on it, but cool handgun. We'll let the owner of that know it's here. All right, up next is a large box from Michigan. Okay. A bunch of stuff in here, so... Oh, wait, know what that looks like. There's two. There's three. Or I always love the old blue SIG boxes. That's always something nice. A holster. We will get into these and show you what we have. Okay, Randy, what do we have in the first one? We have four firearms out of this box. Uh, this is a Springfield Hellcat. So the Springfield Hellcat, for those of you who do not know, that was sort of Springfield's response to the SIG P365. 9mm, double stack, 11 or 13 round capacity, I believe they have a mag magazine is what comes standard with 11 or 13. Okay. Um, they have an optics ready version of this out now, but really nice handguns. You get such a high amount of capacity for such a small package. And so for those of you who might may be looking into getting a concealed carry, these Hellcats are op uh, excellent options. So that's cool. What would you call the condition of that one, Randy? I would say uh, high end to good to very good, probably. Yeah, I'd probably put it in around very good. There's very minimal wear, but you can tell there's lots of marks up on top of the barrel from being used. I wouldn't quite call it excellent, but very good is probably fair. The customer said excellent, but yeah, it's close enough. Again, a lot of people have asked, like, do you deduct, you know, dollars if things are like not as what you would agree on? I understand that when people put things through, not everybody gauges things the exact same way. As long as there's not an egregious misrepresentation, I usually use like, if it's twice removed from where I would put it, if I say it's good condition and the customer calls it excellent condition, or I think it's fair condition and the customer says it's very good, then I would start to debate, you know, whether it was accurately represented. But if I think it's very good and the customer says excellent, that's fine. If the customer says very good and I think it's good, that's close enough. Um, and so there's that, but still, you know, very, very good condition pistol. Next we have the XD, X is that an XDS? Yes. Magazine in the wrong way. Goes better the right way. <laughs> that's the Springfield XDS. The Springfield XDS, the first one came out, I wanna say like eight years ago. Uh, and those sold in our store really well. They came out with a Mod 2, which is what this is, uh, two or three years ago, maybe about three years ago. Single stack, they had them in the 9, the 40, and the 45. I actually prefer the first Gen XDS over the Mod 2, personally. Uh, just feels a little bit thinner. These just feel like they've gotten a little bit bigger. They came out with the XDE around the same time with the hammer, and this sort of like they went with the XDE frame, which is a little bit larger, which again, I don't like. I like the first Gen XDS. A very cool pistol. Condition-wise, what do you call that one? I would say very good to excellent. There's a little wear on top, which had, I mean, that can happen even on a new gun in the gun store. Yeah. So it is hard to really downgrade because of the wear. That's, on, on that's top true. Of the People look at guns, you know, a handful of times, rack the slide. You start getting wear on top of the barrel pretty quickly. It's hard to detract really for that. Customer says it's excellent. I can see that. I would say yeah. very good to excellence, you know, fair enough on it. So that's totally fine. 
Um, customer asked me in a, in a previous video, let's get into the next one. Um, a customer asked me in a previous video uh, last week, have I ever like uh, turned down a firearm? There's only been two cases where I've outright turned down a firearm altogether. And um, one of them was marked as like very good. And it actually was like, I would say the condition itself was probably fair to good. There was a lot of finish loss and the photos are really dark and hard to tell. Both grip panels were cracked and it was actually non-functional. So it's a double single action firearm and the um, when you would pull the slide back, the hammer would actually follow. It was something like that, but it was non-functional and definitely not as, as described. So that one we did send back. Uh, we had another one where there was actually some damage. It came from an estate and the, the person was liquidating an estate. It didn't quite understand the firearm and they were totally understanding about that. And we actually worked out sort of a alternate price as more of a parts gun ra rather than something that was functional. And that worked out well too. But I mean, we've bought over a thousand firearms on our website and very, very, very seldomly do we get into a dispute with somebody. Just as long as you're making an attempt to represent the gun fairly, we're not going to have a problem. And as you can see, we don't really nitpick them. But anyway, let's get into the next one next one is the sig p226 and 40 cal with six magazines wow it's quite a bit yeah of that's nice now what would you rate the condition on this one uh i would call this one i would give it very good very good yeah i would say so too um i'll point a couple things out uh, customer said excellent on this one, which is fine, but there are in the trigger guard dings. I don't know if you're catching that well enough, but there are dings here. There's dings in the rail. So I would say good to very good. Lots of wear on the barrel. Now on our website, we asked for pictures too. And I actually remember this firearm and I remember seeing those dings and marks and everything. And I priced it accordingly. So while I don't necessarily agree with the, with the rating, the pictures provided were good. And from those pictures, I could really get a good representation of what it is we would be getting. So, you know, we're going to go with that. There's quite a bit of wear here on the front strap as well. So anyway, um, there's that one. And again, no argument from me in terms of uh, what we were expecting to get and what we did receive. So again, thank you to, to the uh, seller of this one. Okay, what do we have last from this box, Randy? This is a survival rifle. Currently, Henry has the contract. Uh, this is an older Charter Arms AR-7 Explorer. Um, it essentially is a rifle that was developed uh, for U.S. Air Force pilots that they would carry in their packs. So if they were down, this was their survival rifle. This floats. Everything uh, is inside of the buttstock. Um, underneath the butt pad, magazine storage, and you're gonna have a receiver and a barrel. That's stuck in there pretty good. Both of it's them are stuck. stuck in there pretty good. <laughs> it's all stuck. Ooh, if, it were not, if it were not stuck. If it were not stuck, we could show you. But we, all... we would take it out, you would slide the magazine in, uh, the, the screws in the pistol grip for, or I'm sorry, the receiver, the screws in the pistol grip, you tighten in the receiver, the barrel goes on, It's uh, there's a key notch, and then you would thread the barrel onto the receiver. And then of course you have your, your magazine storage in there as well. We'll have to figure out how to get everything out of there. It is all pretty, ooh, pretty stuck. Uh, this is also rattle can too. This wasn't a factory you know, paint job or anything, but um, we'll get this out and show you guys. Maybe I'll do this in a weekly used gun review. These are actually really interesting rifles. They've had a pretty interesting History, Armalite manufactured them, Charter Arms, Henry, and was that it or was there one more? I feel like there was one more. I think there was one more. Yeah, there was one more, but it's slipping my mind. Nothing okay. to see here, folks. So this has now been dislodged from the stock. <laughs> here we go. Okay. There's the receiver. And the barrel. But anyway, uh, yeah, very cool. So this would slide into here. And then get, man, everything on this is really tight. You get threaded in through this thumb screw here. Barrel would then go on here, and then this collar would thread over it. And then it's assembled. So, very cool rifles. Anyway, happy to get that one in uh, here. And again, thank you to our customer. All right, guys, last but not least is one that I'm pretty excited about. As you can see, first we have to get into the box. This came from YouTube, of all places. And no, they're not sending me my guns. My guns. They're not sending me guns. 
What this is, is a very nice leather that says, do you remember your first subscriber? That was probably me or my wife, your 100th or your 1000th. Anyway, you guys have probably seen a million of these videos. It's a very nice letter that I don't think is hand signed, but it's from Susan Wojcicki, or Wiki Wiki as she's called around the community. Um, this is my 100,000 subscriber play button. So it's only appropriate to put this in the end of this video. A very, very cool thanks to everybody who is a part of this. I really do appreciate that. I remember when I filmed my first video, maybe not my first, but when I started gaining a little bit of traction, I thought, man, one day, how cool would it be to hit 100,000 subscribers, get this plaque and put it in my store? So now I can do that. So that's really, really cool. In fact, during the trying to get this, I read that they don't like guarantee these to everybody who hits 100,000 and you have to like apply for them to validate your channel. And I did that. You guys know I had 100,000 maybe three months ago and um, they, you know, never really got back to me. So I just thought, you know, I'm a gun channel. They're not going to give me a play button. And then about two weeks ago, out of the blue, they get, gave me a code that I used to get this. So very, very cool. 100,000 subscribers. Thank you guys. And we're going to end the video there. Well, guys, that is all we have for you today on this. Again, a big thank you to everybody who has sent their firearms to us through webuyguns.com. Uh, we will continue to do these videos as time goes on. I know a lot of you guys have been telling us that you really enjoy them. So we will keep going, uh, like I said, maybe two to three times a week. But with all of that out of the way, I am Chris. I am Randy. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're watching Marchman TV, and we will see you next time. Sorry. Hey, Pat, I that's, nope, nope, we're keeping that.